Hello everybody, I'm Mixed Mouse and Merman, and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time you're watching Mixed Mouse, hit the old subscribe button, whack the old bell, set your notifications to all, that way you'll be told next time I upload another video. In this video, we're going to be working on a Hater 41 auto drive, uh, which has a very, very common problem, which I've been messaged about um, to say, how do you fix this? And I now have got three of these machines in, and I believe they all have exactly the same problem. Um, so we're going to be doing that. And the answer to fixing this problem is in this box just here. Um, so we're gonna get on and do that. The Hater 41 is a fantastic machine. Um, it's a two wheeled uh, with a roller combination machine and they, they sell for very, very good money indeed. But unfortunately, when this problem occurs, uh, the machine is then regarded as useless and then they're generally sold for next to nothing on the selling sites. You can pick up um, the mower for cheap, cheap, cheap and then get it fixed for around about 23 pounds. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's sort out these Hater 41s with a bouncing and no drive issue. Right, let's take a little wander. So, oh my Lord, it's getting worse. It ain't getting no better. We're getting there. <laughs> so many mowers, we've got a load of mowers done. They're all done, look, see? We're getting there. We've got, we've got about 15, 20 up here, something like that, they're all done. But these are the ones I picked up. Now this first one I picked up um, about two years ago, just been sat in the store, and I didn't think I actually had a grass box for it. Actually, I did. This one I picked up in, um, um, uh, uh, not Eastgate, uh, uh, Rustington Way, um, for cheap, um, and it has this problem. And this one I picked up um, from Emsworth off my mate. Um, he says it all runs, uh, but actually does have a problem. He didn't know about the problem, but um, it's, uh, it has got a problem. I didn't have a grass bag for it, but someone came up and gave me a grass bag for it. But the problem you, you have is, is the drive tends to pack up on them, and then you get this going on. You get this, this, this bounciness on all of them. They all have the same problem. So I would say that that is a, is a very, 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 very common problem. Yeah, see that, see that bounce? And that bounce actually stops the drive from working. So let's get one in. Now one of these, uh, both of these are all power drive and all very drive, okay? Uh, which is fantastic but this one in the middle is also electric start so that's the one we're going to start with because that's the one that's going to be worth the most money also very common fault on these is uh, the grass box flaps they all snap right on this corner here right all of them it's always that corner and all three have got exactly the same problem okay all three and uh you can buy those uh Re, uh, genuine or reproduction for around about 19 quid. So I've ordered three grass flaps as well. And I have also ordered the, uh, the part I consider to be uh, the bit I need to fix this bouncing problem. It will take you around about an hour and a half, okay, to do uh, the fix on these, depending on how good you are and how quick the parts will come apart, okay? So we get this one in the store first, because it is um, electric start, as I say. And then we get it up on a bench and we go from there. Okay, Hater 41 now up on the bench. Now when we tip this uh, machine up onto its side, it will be carburetor side down. And uh, lots of people say, oh, you shouldn't tip it carburetor side down, blah, blah, blah. Okay, right. Uh, it's not the end of the world because I'm gonna be taking all the oil out of this machine anyway and giving it a full service. But if you are a homeowner and you decide to do this, you may want to put a latex glove over top of this fuel, ta uh, fuel cap just to stop any fuel from leaking out or remove all the fuel from the machine and also all the oil as well. Just remember to fill it all back up before uh, you fire the machine. And by tipping the machine onto its side, you are gonna um, get it to smoke a bit because if you don't remove it, it will smoke. But when you're um, doing what I do, it doesn't matter if you have it upside down because generally what I'm gonna do is a service machine anyway, so it's irrelevant, but you should always tip a lawnmower up, carburetor side up anyway. But for the fix, it's not really possible to do that because the part I'm looking to, to change will be at the lowest point and right in the way. So you need to sort of get it um, accessible. So let's get the machine tipped over on the side and I will show you exactly why this machine is doing what it's doing. Right, so Hater 41 now on its side, okay? And uh, I will show you the part that's needed uh, to fix this little cookie. 
And I've got, I think this is a genuine hater part. The part is HY4 10002. So there's your part number. Uh, for it and bring it in shop. There's your part number just there, okay. And this is it. This is the reason why it is doing what it's doing. Um, there's a part number on here as well. Uh, somewhere, I did see it. Uh, uh, could be 410002 as well, which is left-hand side bracket. But if you punch into um, eBay, Amazon, and internet, um, Hater41 um, left-hand bracket, that should come up. Let me just show you where it actually is, okay? Let me take it off tripod, and we'll have a little look inside here. Now, inside here, you see, the, you see this bracket just where I'm pointing at now, okay? That bracket there. That's the bit that's broken, and if you look right up the top, Right at the very top there, you see it's actually snapped. I'll try and wiggle it, wiggle it, just a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Can you see that with my hand in the way? It's very hard. See that bracket? See that bracket there? Look, it's broke. So that bracket there is a bit you've got to you've got to um you've got to change. Unfortunately, it does mean you got you got to remove quite a few components, and you have got to remove the roller to get to this. Um, I'm hoping to leave most of the cowling in place. Uh, but if I look outside um, and just go over to the other machines, let's just place a bet. Uh, I'll have a bet with you, 50 quid. So it says it's the same fault, right? So you're, you're gonna owe me 50 quid or 50 pound Amazon, um, Amazon wishlist purchase. Let's tip this, this cookie on its side. Boom. There you go. There you go, Flo. There you go. Is that a bracket there? That's broke too, look. Snap right on, right there, look. That snapped. Yeah, see that? That one snapped. So that's one. Ooh. Let's check the other one out. Tip him up. Ooh. Let's have another little look. Can't see, too much dust in there. Hang on. Yeah, that one's broke too. That one's gone too. It's actually broke on the other leg this time. But that's all loose as well. Yeah, it's exactly the same problem. So all three of these have, as I, as I suspected, the exact same issue all right so i've ordered up three brackets i have also ordered up new belts as well because they are a variator drive and it doesn't it doesn't hurt to put a new belt on whilst you've got the gearbox all out and what have you um it don't hurt to uh to a place of belts i'm smelling a bit of fuel because i've tipped up on its side am i leaking fuel oh, just a little bit not a lot okay so the first things first to do uh to do this repair is you're gonna to have to remove uh, the roller to a degree. So what I would start off with doing, tip the lawnmower back up onto its top, just to show you where this goes. Okay, so that bracket, there it is. If you imagine it, it goes up like that, bomb. And the two retaining bolts is that bolt there and that bolt there, not the, not the arm support, that one there. So a little plastic cover there. Undo them two nuts very, very gently and uh, that one may spin because it's actually broken inside, um, but that's the two retaining bolts for it. Um, we'll get that done first and I'll come back to you. Okay, so that's the two little tiny uh, 10 mil um, nuts removed off of there. You may find that this, this will then loosen up a touch as, as you go to adjust it. This plate may come off, okay? But uh, it's, not, it's not the end of the world. All we're gonna have to do is just literally um, put it back on when we go to put it back on. So let's tip the lawnmower up onto its side and we'll move on with the rest of the repair. And a quick little note, the reason why this, um, why the drive stops on these is because when that bracket breaks up the top there, as you can see, uh, the gearbox drops. And inside here, you can see the gearbox shaft is not actually within this housing. And this is the other one that breaks sometimes, but the gearbox shaft is actually down here and it's not actually inside its housing. So the gearbox is on, is on, is on the screw width. I'll tip you around that way, you'll see what I'm talking about. The gearbox is on the screw width and that's why your drive is no longer working. But this is a bracket we need to change, this one here. So let's get on with that. Right, with the height adjustment in its lowest setting, uh, there's a little tiny bolt right at the back here. See that little tiny that gold style one? And that's the one that the bracket actually sits on. I'll put my finger inside, you can see. Uh, the bracket sits on it just there, okay, on, on, on the arm, which is the one that comes off of the bracket just hither, okay? So that's the bracket you wanna remove first, or the bolt you wanna remove first. Um, which is the little tiny, um, the goldy color one, not the silver one up there, the goldy one. Remove that 10 mil first and that will start to loosen off the bracket. Okay, so I have now also removed this little tiny plastic cover that goes on the side. It's held on by three 10 mil bolts, one here, 
one just here and one up in here. There's three 10 mils. These very, very commonly break, and I think mine have. Um, but uh, I might just super glue the, the bits back on just so it uh, hold in place. They just sit there, that's all they do. And now we can see that bracket. See that bracket there, look? The visibility. That's why it's no good. Um, so we're moving to the next step. I'm removing the next lot of bolts. The next job you've got to do, because you've got to remove some of this bracketry in here, you're going to have to remove this cowling. So the blade's got to come off. That's what should be a 14 mil. Uh, you've got a bolt up here to remove and a bolt up here to remove. I don't think there's any more in, in, inside the deck, but we'll have a look. Uh, so get, you want to take this quarter section, half moon out uh, of the cowling, um, get that done, and then that gives you a bit more uh, room to move as well, a bit more accessibility, because if you want to change the, change the belts whilst you're in here, this is a perfect time to do it. So let me get them, them taken off very, very quickly. You can watch me whilst I do that. I don't want this to be a massively long video, so I'm trying to do it step by step rather than uh, record the whole video itself. So you've got a little tiny 10 mil 3.8 there. You've got one up in here and all, if that fits. Sometimes they don't like the fit. I have to get a, oh, it is, mo is moving. It's not get a, a shallower socket, but it is coming. Just go a bit easy with these because it is steel versus aluminium, okay? And what tends to happen is, is uh, they, they, they do snap off. So don't don't go in there, hammer and tong. Just just give it a little a little bit of a uh, a little bit of love, so to speak, as you go. Or a little tiny soft blow hammer just to put on that um that socket to take the uh take the old uh, blade off. Uh, make sure your HT is disconnected when you're working on the machine because you don't want this thing firing up. That goes on. I'm going to remove the belt and I'll leave the socket on there. And we'll come back to that a bit later on. So take your blade off, that's going to be sharpened and balanced a bit later on. Your friction disc will also then come off. That's good. And I think we're there. I don't think there's any more bolts in here. So now this, half, this quarter section, it will, I think, separate. It's a bit of a, um, like a little tiny plastic notch in here. It's just got to be undone. It's a bit fiddly fiddly, but once you expose the dirt, you can get a screwdriver up in here and just uh, remove, it, remove this quarter section without breaking it. There's a, there's a bit of broken bracket just there, look. I think. This is absolutely full of grass in here. There's little tiny clips and what have you. It just, it just retains itself, so just go a bit easy. Easy but easy. I'll get a screwdriver in there, Mikas. Just to separate this up. It's just been a bit, it's just where it's all, it's all stuck together. But you see what I'm doing, just, you just got to try, try and gently, gently remove this um, this cowling. You don't want to break it, obviously, because it is plastic and, um, oh, come on, you come. And um, they're quite expensive to replace. So yeah, just gently, gently, there's a little tiny catch on here, a bit like an um, uh, electric fit. And you've got to push it in and then give it a bit of a, a, a twist and it, it comes out like so and it will always come out just like that. So there, there's a little tiny catch I'm on about. Just yeah, I don't know if you saw a lot of that, but there's a little tiny catch just there it sits on, okay? So that's that. So now that exposes all of your, all of your, um, your, your drive assembly and variators up there and all that sort of lovely stuff, all your pulleys are there. And these belts look absolutely, yeah, well old. Uh, so this will have new belts on it, um, which I've already ordered it. I've got them here. <coughs> um, for your belts, if you want to know what your belt numbers are, I bought genuine, I only buy genuine on the belts. Your part numbers for your belts are there and there. We've got to turn it around. There's your part numbers for your belts, in case you want your belts, okay? So make a note of them. There's your belt numbers, okay? And uh, we can now move on to the next step. Okay, so your next step would be, to, there's a lot of tension on this spring here, and this is why this roller is being pulled over this way towards us. What you want to do is remove the circlip off of there and drop the spring off. Go very, very careful, it's under a lot of tension. Um, and just make sure that, that that gold bar and this um, spring comes off. As I say, you may have to adjust the height control to take less tension off of the spring. So if it's in the highest position possible, that will be the least amount of tension on it. If you have it on the lowest amount of a uh, lowest height cut, then it'll be the most amount of tension. So put it onto the highest cut and then just remove that, take that circuit off and then just give it a tap downwards and it go boing. And uh, that'll be all the tension taken off of the roller. 
Okay, so I now have removed the spring. The spring came off and also removed the arm as well. Just make a little note of where the spring goes up this top end. There's a little tiny bracket up in here, which it sits in, okay? It's, it's quite self-explanatory, but what I recommend is before you take the spring off, just have a look at its orientation. Take a few photographs if need be along your journey. That way it'll make it easier for when you, you go back. As you can also see, this belt has actually come off of the, off of the gearbox pulley. It's not actually on there. Uh, it's actually thrown it off. You see it at the back there? So that's why the drive doesn't work because the gearbox went, went, went all, all peculiar. So what I'm now going to do, I'm now going to undo these two bolts here, one here and one here, and that will help loosen the, the, the roller off. What you may also have to do is release these two down here as well just to, to pull the roller right out. But we'll see if we need to do that as we go along on our journey. Okay, with those two bolts now removed, um, this bracketry here, look, there it is. There's our, there's our fending article. If you can get it to come out, you, you're brilliant, okay? But you may have to do a bit more jiggly pokery and remove uh, this bracket from elsewhere because it, it, it's sort of stuck in here. It may come out, there it goes, it's gone. There's your bracket and that's where it snapped, see? <clears throat> right in the top corner. Uh, in fact, it's, uh, it's actually failed um, twice. Uh, it's failed on both, okay, on here. Um, so we still need to retain um, the bit up the top, the bolt up the top there. See so that bolt right up the very, very top in there? That's got to come out, okay? Um, and then we can then remove the, um, the stud out of the top of this because there's a stud inside here uh, which has to come out and be fitted into the new one, okay? Just here. So get this one done, undone next and we'll be golden. Okay, we're around the other side, and uh, on here, th this is the two, the two bolts that hold your bracket in place, and this one is snapped off on the inside. But it's got to come out, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get two 10 mil nuts, and I'm going to put these on very carefully. I'm going to get two, so then it, it double locks, okay? Um, I'm going to wind two on, and then I should be able to then withdraw um, that... Uh, that bolt from from its housing as I say go a bit careful because uh, it is aluminium okay so it won't like to come out so by putting two nuts on you will then be able to um, try and uh, withdraw this but don't come with, a, with the bolt so you may have to improvise and put another bolt through um, because I'm on the uh, on the bracket they're self-cutting so they don't have a thread in them okay so I'll put another nut on just like so I'm just gonna lock that one down the, the top nut that's all on all on together and then i can then try and just remove this one without that one moving maybe get two 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 spanners okay just to hold them hold them into place so they don't so one doesn't one doesn't rotate let me grab another 10 mil and lock them off together and then that way um you should be able to withdraw it so let's put that one on there to hold that still that one on there, and then very, very carefully lock them up, and you should be able to then uh, retract this uh, this stud. Okay, it's quite difficult to do, but you see what I'm doing? Just uh, lock them off together, and then the whole lot should lock together, and it should bring that stud up uh, evenly for you. Okay, so get that done, and I'll be back to you in two ticks. Okay, I know the lighting's not brilliant. I think you're actually being affected by this other, this other lighting system. Let me move this other lighting system out of the way a bit, see if that's any better for you. I'll try and do it as, as good as I can. Yes, it's actually outside light, I think, they're actually getting interfering. Yeah. I know the lighting's not brilliant, but um, I'm trying to do the best I can. So now it's locked off, you can now very, very carefully and very, very gingerly undo, the, undo this, um, this stud with two locking nuts on it because it's got to come out, it can't stay in there. What you don't want to do is snap it off right inside because you then have to drill and tap it, okay? And that's not what I'm looking to do. As I say, they don't, they don't come with, um, with, with spare bolts. You can buy them genuine, but what I tend to do is just get a nice long 10 mil, 10 mil bolt and push it up, up in there with a wash on, um, up behind it and then put a nut on top. But I'll show it later on in the video anyway. So hopefully this stub, will, this stub will now remove. I think we're getting there. I think we are winning. Let me try and put a ratchet on it. And that's the best way I've found of doing it. Because that stub's got to come out. Yeah, it's coming. There you go, and that's that stud. 
now removed. Okay, that's got to come out. It can't stay in there because that's where the new bolt comes up through to hold the bracket on. Right, with that now done, um, what I would now like to do is now like to remove the belts because the belts are being refitted on here. And as you can see, it's the shorter belt that goes on to the, um, the gearbox and the longer belt goes on to the drive system. If you're not sure, um, these belts are being replaced. You can just cut them off, okay? And then just make a note, there will be a number on these belts that tell which one goes where. Uh, the, one, the 411024 is the um, drive to variator bottom pulley, okay? So, uh, sorry, um, crankshaft to variator bottom. And that would mean that the, uh, over, uh, the 25 belt, um, which is this one here on behind, that goes gearbox top variator, okay? Uh, just make sure you get your orientation correct. So crankshaft to bottom, gearbox to top. Okay, let me get them belts removed and I'll be back to you. Okay, so what I've had to do now is I've just removed the two bolts out of here just to give me a bit more free play with the roller. And I've now slipped the shaft, let me bring a, me bring a light in so you guys see what we're talking about. Let me bring a little light in here somewhere. I've now just slipped in the gearbox um, bottom shaft into this bracket here. Um, push this one up into the top into here. Okay, and then make sure it's all, it's all lined up where it needs to be. I've slipped the, um, the, the first uh, belt on, uh, which is the gearbox to top variator. That's nearly in place now. So now we're in a situation where I want to now put up this bracket because the bracket will now have to sit uh, up the top and then it will then feed onto these bolts here, which will then hold all of that into place. So let me get the new bracket and we'll just navigate it into position and get these two lined up first um, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I've now just slipped the bracket into position, okay? Now we've got a bit more work to do yet. We're nowhere near out the woods yet, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the first bolt in through this bracket here, through this hole. That's the first one to go in, just to hold that bracket up there. Then I'm gonna put the two 10 mils uh, in this one here and in this one behind it in there. Uh, where is it? There is there, okay? And that'll go up through and into the bracket. Remember what I said, they're self-cutting, okay? So just go a bit easy because uh, it is aluminium. So once you'll have those three in place, the bracket will be near enough secured. Um, however, unfortunately, we do have to remove the variator a bit later on. You can do it now if you like. It's just one simple um, 13, I think it's 13 mil there. Uh, undo that, okay? And just be um, conscious of where the spring goes beforehand. There's a spring behind it, okay? Just there. So just be a bit curious of where that spring fits. Just, just take some photographs, take some mental notes of where that spring fits. Because when you want to do that little tiny um, 13 mil nut, that will go twang. I mean, you think, oh, hang on, where did that, all that go? So I'm going to do that one first and that one. And then I'm going to put that little tiny, remember that little tiny 10 mil bolt that sits up onto this little bracket just there that holds your gearbox in place? That would be done as well. Uh, that one there. Okay, so let's get them done first and then uh, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so where are at now? Uh, that bolt there has now been put on the gearbox and on the bracket. Uh, that bolt's been put in there, that bolt's been put in there, and also the bolt has been put in at the back of that one just up there. We're still having to do the one right at the very back, but that variator is in the way. Uh, got to remove that. Just double check it. Everything is where it needs to be, okay? And then that way you, 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 you understand where it's going. Uh, the spring, I don't know if you can see, but let me bring it around here. Uh, yeah, around here is best. I want to try and show you everything. Otherwise, you say, oh, you miss that bit. So around here, let me put a light in there so we can see what's going on. Just about there. The spring to your variator goes on there. You see it right at the very, very back here. There's a little tiny, tiny niblet where your spring goes. Let me get a pointer. That would be even easier, Mick. Right, so the, the back of the spring goes on that little tiny hook just there. There's a little tiny niblet for that spring to go on. And then the other side of the spring um, sits inside the variator at the very, very back here. Let me try and bring you in here. Sits on the back of the variator just there, okay? So that's where your spring goes. But just be mindful, okay, because it's under tension. And the reason I put the... Um, uh, the, the gearbox belt on first before I did all of that is because the room is very, very limited behind the top of the gearbox to get this belt on. So now this, this is actually on, even if it comes off the gearbox and goes behind uh, down below it, you can slip it back over top, but you can't put on over top with it, this gearbox in place. Okay, so that's why I did it in that order. So now I'm going to remove the variator, which is that 113 mil um, nut just there. Undo that one. Okay, and then that variator will come loose and, and it, will, it will spring back, it's under tension. 
Um, just be mindful where it all goes. There are a couple of washers and retaining plates under behind that as well. So just go a bit careful and just be mindful of when you take it apart, where it all goes. Right, now I have now removed the variator bolt and just dropped it down. There is a the drive cable hooked up to the back of it. The spring goes on and there is one or two little tiny washers and retaining pins on the back of this um, uh, variator just down in here. Okay, they need to go back in the right orientation when you put it back on, otherwise your variator will not move and it needs to move. But now that gives us access to that last and final bolt up the top that sheared off. All I'm gonna do is find a nice little 10 mil bolt to put all the way through there. Um, around about an inch and a quarter to, um, to two inches long is plenty good enough. Let me find a bolt, I'll feed that up into there. I'll put a little tiny washer on it as well, just to make sure it's got plenty of skirt behind the, behind the bolt. And then that'll be the bracket then installed. And then all we then have to do is just let you fit the rest of the stuff together. Right, um, that's the bolt now put up in this side here. And that's now made that, that all really, really nice and taut now. Now the difficulty is you now got to put back on this variator, okay? And what I will say is they are a bit tricky, but they're not, they're not completely undoable. You get a washer and a bolt, okay? And then you also get this countersunk shoulder washer, if you like. Now this will go in with this flat side, uh, the smooth side, that are going up against the deck on there like so. And then this little tiny bevel bit, that will actually sit inside the variator arm, okay? And um, fit it all in, and don't forget to hook, hook your link, hook, hook your spring up. Your spring will go, let me try and show if I can. There's a little tiny curve on the back of this uh, variator arm and your spring sits inside there, okay? That's where it sits, just inside that inside that um, divot, inside the far side of the variator arm. And your spring goes behind the gearbox and then attaches onto that back bit I showed you earlier on. So let me try and get it half fitted at least, and then I'll come back to you either when I've got it fitted or, or, or half fitted, and then we'll go from there. But it is fiddly, but it's doable. Someone put it in there, so hell, we can do it too. Right. Variator is now back on and I put the bolt right up in the top there. That's all done. I loosely fitted the, uh, the variator in place. Make sure the drive cable is on. And if you set your variator speed to rabbit, that gives you a bit more cable, okay? To, so it's a bit slacker. Now is a time to fit the spring. So what I do with my, oh, is I've got my long leg, which is what goes on a variator, and it'll go on this way, facing you, the hook goes on. And then I just fit a piece of, about two foot lump of pull cord all the way through. What I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna fit this leg here onto the variator, thread this cord all the way around the back so that when we get this, this spring located in place, we can then pull this end and that will then provide the tension onto the variator and we can then bolt it down. So let me get the first bit hooked up and I'll come back to it to show you what I mean. Right, variator spring has now been fitted. Literally, if you follow that, that bolt up along the edge of this, this, gold, this gold variator pulley, you see that little tiny uh, cutout that's where the spring actually sits. Unfortunately, my GoPro will not fit in there, but it's literally just behind here. Okay, just behind there, that's where it sits. Just on, on this edge, it sits in that little tiny groove. You can then, I need to put you on the stand for this, I can't, I can't do it one-handed. Uh, let me bring on the stand and try and zoom you in and try and get you to the best position I can. Right, this is about the best angle I can get. Literally, I, I have to try and get in myself. So with your with your, your spring on the far end of a variator, bring your pull cord underneath this cable, okay? And then all you've got to do is try and pull that spring all the way back, okay? And then drop it down onto that little tiny nibbler I showed you earlier on. Now, I'm not gonna be able to show you a lot, but literally it's that easy, like so. And now, and now it's sat in place, okay? Um, it's a bit of a pickle to get the spring behind, but it's just perseverance. Once that's hooked in place there, we know that the, the variator spring is in place. You can now go back and then connect up your variator. Uh, just do that do that 13 mil bolt up a bit tidier and put your variator um, belt on as well. So let's get that done. Okay, uh, variator spring is now fitted. It's actually quite an easy job. It just takes a bit of time because because it, it, space is so limited behind there, okay? But uh, hopefully that, that has helped some of you guys out that do struggle with this variator belt, uh, variator spring, so there can be a bit of a pickle. Now that's in place, I can now finish up this 30 mil bolt, do that up. Um, it doesn't got to be on the colossally tight. Remember, it does have to move, but it does have to be up there suitably tight. And just want to slip this belt on over the gearbox, over the variator, and then it has to go gearbox to top variator, which is the top of the top of the deck because your other belt goes from um, crankshaft um, to the bottom of variator. 
It may also pay whilst you're here, just to give that um, variator a little bit of an all up whilst it's out. And uh, just, just make sure it all moves as it should do. Bit of an all up, bit of a clean up and air blow and what have you, because that way you don't want to have to come back and find out your, your suspension's working, but your variator, your variator doesn't. And half the reason these variators drives pack up is because you lose up to about three millimeters of wear on this belt. And this is a belt quite commonly, I have seen that um, lawnmower repair shops do not change. They change this one but don't change that one because they know all of this has got to come out. But uh, there you go. Um, so let me put the belt on and I'll come back to you once I've done a variator up as well. So if you are struggling to put your belt on, what I recommend is, is to slip the belt off the pulley on this end and bring it down towards the gearbox and then hook it over to your um, variator. Once it's on the variator, you can then literally just feed it onto the, uh, onto the pulley. But if you try and do it on the gearbox first, onto the variator, you may struggle. So as I say, just slip the belt off, bring it down to here and then put it on the variator first and then come back and slip it over to the gearbox and you'll be golden. So that's the belt now all put on and the variator bolt's now been done up. As I say, it can be done up tight, but if you don't put it on correctly, those two, those two washers that go on there, if it, if it, it should go bolt, washer, variator arm, and then the shoulder washer with the shoulder coming into the arm. If you don't put it on right, this variator will not move and it's supposed to move uh, like so. I'm trying to get hold it one hand. It's supposed to rock forward like that. Now, if it doesn't do that, then your, your belt, your drive's never gonna work successfully, okay? So if it doesn't do that, take it off because you put it on wrong. Okay, so the next part will be to put your um, your dry, your crank your crankshaft belt to your bottom variator on. And what I recommend you do is take the spark plug out for this, okay? Because you wanna try and turn the engine with, with no compression. So what you can do is, is start off just by looping it over the crankshaft, okay? put it on there loosely, and then pull the variator forward, and then just loop it onto the variator itself. Once it's in place and your spark plug has been removed, you can then literally just put, put your thumb, a bit of pressure, and you can then turn this engine with your dead man's handle in a course mick, because it won't go nowhere with an engine brake on. Let me grab a clamp and put the old engine brake on. I'll take it, you know, so it's, so it's activated. That way the engine can't start, but we can freely turn the crankshaft, okay? Without doing that, you don't want to go nowhere. So um, then just literally just feed um, the, the pulley round and with your thumb, just try and encourage it onto the crankshaft pulley. Just once you get it started, it, it feeds itself in, there it goes. Boom, there it goes. So now you've, got, now you've got your variator pulleys all in place, gearbox all working and all done and dusted. Don't, don't fight it, just make it easier on yourself. So that's now all that put together. The next thing is the dreaded spring that goes on for the height control. Right, next is the spring of death, people. Um, it's got one end here, as I said, it goes on the post other end. You did see that in a, in a previous clip. Just make sure um, it goes up a narrow side up like that, okay? So hook it onto the post. You can do it blind pretty much. Hook it onto the post. There it goes, that's on there now. And then just let that let that sit down. And remember this bit of pork we had earlier on, yeah? All we're gonna do is we're gonna thread that onto there, half and half, okay? So it all lines up. And then thread that behind uh tut roller it's called tut roller if you're in yorkshire right thread that up like that and you want it about level next thing you want to do is get your hammer and all you want to do is then cross thread it onto a hammer hammer handle or pry bar so literally just start to thread that in and cross it over so it bites okay it's got a bite because the last thing you want is this spring to let go so just keep cross threading it over like so, and work your way down towards the back of the roller, okay? Make sure this, this cord's in the right, right location. Keep cross-threading, keep cross-threading, keep cross-threading it. Once you get to a certain location, certain point, uh, you'll find that you can then literally just turn this hammer or pry bar, whatever you've got, just keep spinning it. You have to keep moving it up and down. Don't let it bop you in the chops. Right, this is how I do it. And there's other people saying, Mick, there's an easy way of doing it that. Well, if there is, do a video, okay? But all you then do is then you pull that up into the right location. Oh, I just slipped. Hang on, my, my, my cord slipped, that's all it is. Make sure we're all right, yeah, we're right, yeah. So that's what I mean, just go a bit careful, make sure that bolt's, that's in the right place. Yeah, it is. Just keep doing that. It is a bit tricky, tricky dicky. And then once you get to a certain point like there, you can then Pull the hammer back onto itself. As I say, there's a lot of tension there, people, so you have to go a bit easy. Might, might want another turn on there, Mick. 
like that. And you can see we're nearly there now. So all we want to do is get the hammer in the right location, which is going to be about there. And now I can now pull that and pull the spring over, mind your fingies, over that post. Once it, once it gets to a certain point, it's like, I give up, I give up. Okay, you can have it. I know you can't see a lot, but I'm trying really fighting hard to keep this spring from coming off. I think we're there, right, we're there. Okay, so that spring's now in place. Okay, and it's on where it needs to be. Now, the, the, the worst part of this is, is when you go to remove this bit of pull cord, because that may want to jump up, okay? So bring your pull cord back out through. And what I recommend is, is you pull it up or you, you cut this bit off. That might be a bit easier for you guys. Cut that bit off of there. Nice and, nice and flush, all right, about there, as tight as you can get it, all right? And then, <coughs> always pull it up, don't pull it down. If you pull it up, I pull it down, guess what happens? You've done all of that all over again. Uh, so give that a little tiny tap, make sure that's gonna stay up where it, where it needs to. You don't want that coming off now, because that's under a lot of tension now. I'm now gonna get my hammer, and I'm now gonna do exactly the same. Call it all round, and I'm gonna come up from the top here now, and very, very gently, hopefully, take that off. Now, it, 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 it will fight you. Trust me, it will fight you because it, it, it do not want to come off. It just go a bit easy. Because see, how, see how it's trying to come off all the time? Just go very, very gently with it. It goes bang. All right. So now that's off. <coughs> that's one of the hardest bits to this whole job. Okay, that, without a doubt, that bit is, 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 quite, is, is quite tricky. I'm hoping I haven't had no audio throughout the whole lot. I just noticed my plug wasn't all the way in. So I'm hoping you've got audio for this. If not, I have to do a voiceover for your whole entire lot. Um, with that on now, that needs to have a circlip put on there, which would be a brand new one because mine broke. So get a little, in fact, we've got one here, uh, which is not, not the best. I don't want to get a new circlip, which I think I have just behind me. I have them here um, for my dad's, uh, my dad's, yeah, here we are. Oh, no, there's the actual circlips, I want star clips. Let me find some star clips. I had them for my dad's lawnmower the other week. My, my dad's lawnmower packed up on him. Uh, I had to fix, fix, took axle. Um, right, so get your circlip. I'll show you an easy way how to do that. A little box of circlips. So if you're watching this video beforehand, you know, you know you're gonna need a few bits and pieces, right? Uh, circlip, half sensible size. It could, no, it's a bit too small. Let's go up one size. That's that one there. I think that's him. That could be it. Yeah, golden. What we want to do is get yourself a little 10 mil socket, all right? With me impact on Mick, and that's a 13 in there. Let's grab my 10 mil, and I'll show you a little trick how to put these on, because so many people, they struggle with these too. All I do is get a little 10 mil socket, right? Like that, and I then just balance the circlip, uh, the socket on top. I then put that like that, right? And then I get ammo, decent ammo. And then get ammo, all right? Balance it on top of on top of on top of the socket, like so. And then with an hammer, just literally tap that all the way up. It's a bit of a pickle. Uh, maybe even be the wrong size. But once you've got it halfway on, I might drop back, I might drop back down a socket size to be fair. I might put try and put an eight mil on there. Let eight mil go on there? Yeah. Once you get a decent put a decent whack on it you'll find that that'll go all the way up and that ain't going nowhere. So that's the circlip on now. So that's that part done. Right, now that um, circlip's gone on there, the spring, of, the spring of death is on, that ain't going nowhere. Just double check it is where it needs to be, right at the very bottom of that washer where it is, so that's good. So all that's now left to do is to put your cowling back on, uh, your plastic bit goes on here, one bolt here, one bolt here, and then a little clip goes on to there. That's no drama, you can do that. Don't forget to put your bolts in down the bottom here as well if you haven't already done that as well. And your roller should now look nice and level, as it should do. Um, and hopefully, um, once that's all done, you can then sharpen your blade if you want to. But uh, once I get all that done, uh, I'll come back to you in two ticks. Okay, um, friction disc is now back on. Blade all sharpened and balanced, as it should be as well. The blade is a bit battered, but it'll be fine for, for the season. So now that's done, um, I believe everything is done apart from just one or two other little bits. So don't go away just yet, because we're not quite finished. Um, and I'll be back to you in two ticks. Right, the next bit you may have forgotten about is putting this plate back on. Um, you've got to put the plate on with the, uh, the cutout on this side, not this side, okay? Because the height suspension control uh, will lock off in certain positions, okay? 
So it's got to go there. I'm a bit close to the older, the older end of the end of the bench there. So it goes all the way down to where it needs to go and all the way back up. So my height control's now working. Just got to put a 10 mil on there, 10 mil on there, and the little tiny covers that go on, they've got to go on as well. I might have to just have to cut this one off a little tiny bit once I've got the nut down. Uh, but they're roughly the same length, but the little tiny plastic cap won't go on. So let me get that done. I'll be back to you once I've done that. Okay, so moment of truth time. Have we fixed it or not? Now, do you remember on this one here? Suspension, suspension, suspension. Yeah? On this one. Solid. So we have now fixed that bit, okay? But I want to make sure that the drive now works. So the drive, I don't know if the drive was working to be fair, but to begin with, maybe the gearbox is gone. But we should see. But there's, no, there's now no suspension dip on that, okay? And the height control now fully works as it should do, okay? Um, so we're going to put it on to choke, run it up. Now I do actually have electric start on here as well, which we're going to try. Let's put a new battery in I'm going to try that again in a minute. Uh, so choke it. Slipping on the uh, on the cog on the side there. Put it onto low. Yeah, I think the chain slipping. Feel it. Yeah, that works. But there is a slight um, catch on it. I think it, it is that chain. I can hear it. There. I think the train's slipping slightly. But it drives. See that clunk? That's it, clunk, 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 clunk. So the chain might be seized on one of the links. But I'll investigate that. That's no drama. Um, so it, it goes fast, it goes slow. Uh, it idle, as a quantum should. Yep, lovely. Lovely. See that how, how it lo locks there? I think that chain. I think that chain sees. Clink, 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 clink. So it all works, but I have got a bit more work to do. I think it's the drive chain. It's got a, a, a solid link on it, and it's 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 seizing. It's, it's kicking over the, over the sprocket. So I've got a bit more work to do on this one yet. But does electric start work? Is a question because that that's the main feature. Look at that electric start as well. So electric start now all works, all runs. It drives. Uh, I've lost that suspension that we had before, which is good. Engine runs sweet as a nut. And that's how you do that. Not a job for the faint-hearted, but if you've got two or three hours spare on a Sunday afternoon, you could do that. Okay, so there you go. Um, a nice little fix here. Yeah, it might be a bit of a lengthy video, this one. Uh, however, it is what it is. I have tried to do this video step by step because lots of people have been asking me how to fix this problem. And although um, I do still have an issue with this machine, I believe it to be, a, it's like a clunk, clunk, clunk. It can't be belts because the belts are all smooth. Uh, I have a feeling on the left hand side from the back of the mower there is a, a drive chain in there which transfers from a varia belt going down onto a drive chain off of the gearbox. I've got a sneaky feeling there's something going on in there so it might be just be a worn sprocket or something along that line. I'll get to the bottom of it. I may do a video if I can if I can solve it straight away and uh, but it may be the roller has to come back out again to get into that again just to, just to expose it all. I won't know until I have another look at it but we should see. But either way, I've now got a Hater 41 with electric start, all runs, all drives, and that suspension thing has now gone, which is, that, that's a fix. And that fix can be held, had for around about 23 pound. I will put a link into, um, into the description and into the comment section. So if you have this problem, you can then hit the link and go shopping off to Amazon and go and pick that part up um, and, and you'll have it free, free to access, so that's good. 
So hopefully if you should enjoy this little video of Mixed Mowers and Mower Man, if you did, please show your appreciation, hit the subscribe button, whack the old bell, set your notifications to all, that way you'll be told next time I upload another video. I look forward to seeing this episode of Mixed Mowers very, very soon, but until then, people don't forget, much more importantly, take care easy. Want to bring you a little update on that. You remember that little hate of 41 I did the other day? Uh, here it is here. I, I had three denied. You remember I had three? Well, this was all now done, apart from the rear grass flap, which should be coming tomorrow. I blank the sides in and give it a bit of a, a bit of paint. I've got a, just a bit more paint on the sides. I'm only just touching it up. I'm not doing anything other than just touching it up. It's a bit clearer and a bit, bit better than what it was. Um, and I have just um, put some uh, Revive it on the plastics just to bring them up. But do you remember this had the the drive issue problem, where once I've done the fix, um, it was like clicking, but I think I've done it. All it was, was just inside here, uh, where the bracket goes down, it then sits inside the top end of this uh, small toothed um, cog on here, and um, the aluminium silver bit has got to sit inside the black bracket, and mine was hanging out. And I think that's the reason why. So now I'm just going to test it. Last time it was making that clunk, clunk, clunk noise. So not been started today. Uh, I'm going to try and start straight off the electric start if I can. So I want to test that. So straight off the electric start. Lovely. So last time the drive was going clunk, clunk, clunk. It ain't doing that no more. Fixed up. Look at that. Now the drive's really improved because the gearbox is now in line with each other. So that's on the fast setting. Onto slow, so does it variate? Yeah, slow. I'll turn it around and put it onto fast so you can see the difference. Now coming through on slow mode and then pull this in for fast. Yep, that works. Good, we're happy with that. So that's a little hate of 41. I didn't just want to leave it because I, I thought you guys might have thought, oh yeah, Mick didn't fix it, but I did. Um, it was literally just that, that little tiny aluminium bracket at the, at the bottom of that bracket. It's got to sit inside this black roller assembly housing. It was just hanging out by about five or six mil. It wasn't a lot. But now, no clunking noise. So all we've got to have now is a new grass flap about to turn up tomorrow and um, it's already had new air filter, spark plug, whatever. Anyway, that's done.